The Porsche 918 Spyder was hailed as a legendary hypercar because of its innovative hybrid engine design and its lightweight construction, but its aerodynamics, particularly from the regular Spyder version, didn't get much hype, despite there being a number of interesting features such as the extended rear edges, the vents around the bottom and top of the front wheels, the front splitter, and even a small gap between the hood's front and the rest of the hood. I mean, the Spyder can do 0 to 100 kph in 2.6 seconds and has a top speed of 214 miles per hour. So its aerodynamics should be good. Let's find out. We did the simulation of one and the front is really good. Much better than most cars, for example, the front splitter is working very well because the flow accelerates underneath it and as such the pressure drops. That creates good downforce. And many cars do that, but where the Spyder is better is that the flow doesn't separate underneath it and that's for two clever reasons. First is that the front underneath is curved up just a touch, so it isn't flat. That allows the flow to stay attached over it, but the second and arguably more impressive part is the front splitter isn't actually a splitter, it's actually a small wing element. The approach of adding an integrated front wing was very rare back when this was designed, but since then has become more common because of how good it is. So the flow actually travels over the wing and then some of the air is directed underneath the car to meet up with the flow that originally went underneath. And this integrated front wing design is even better when you think about how much smaller the car is now. If you were to use a regular splitter, you'd have to extend it out the front several inches. While that's a cool look, it makes the car less practical. So morphing the splitter into an integrated wing element, you can still achieve good downforce without the impractical part of the splitter. And the fact that quite a lot of effort was put into producing downforce at the front wheels is partly because the 918 is effectively a four wheel drive so it has power to put down at the front, not just the back. And the impressive part is that while it does produce downforce, it produces almost no drag as you can see here. And that's a hard thing to do, produce downforce without much drag penalty, but Porsche does it. Over the hood, the flow is good, and we can now understand why the small gap in the hood was put there. It wasn't put there because it makes the hood flow better, because while the flow does stay attached and is nice, many other cars have similar hood flows without this gap. So what the gap does is it lets the flow from the front come through another way. So it alleviates some of the drag you'd get from this flow just entering in the front and having to either meander around until it exits, which is a very lossy process, or it just enters and decelerates like crazy and then bleeds out another opening. So that gap isn't there so much for the hood, but for the air from elsewhere to escape and escape through a location that doesn't disturb the rest of the flow. And actually that's a really hard thing to do, and to do it at the front is pretty brave because if it messes up the flow here, the rest of the car's upper surface won't perform very well. But they have succeeded because you can see no real drag from it occurs. These simulations were done with open foam, and if you're interested in learning open foam, then check out our courses here. Now, the vents at the back of the front wheel are performing well. You can see that for the top vent, the flow coming out is very straight and streamlined. That increases the efficiency of it joining the rest of the flow because it doesn't introduce needless turbulence. So the opening in the wheel well is positioned in a way to capture the flow inside cleanly and direct it out without causing unnecessary drag. And it is slow, which isn't desirable, but that can't really be helped here because the flow inside the wheel well is slow as well. The flow from out the bottom vent is good in that it is also well behaved, but it isn't as good because it is kind of down at an angle instead of more in line with the free stream flow. The good news about these flows exiting these two vents is that much of it is directed into the vent in front of the rear wheel. That's a great way of using low energy flow because you're going to slow it down anyway once it enters here. So this way you're not using higher energy flow from the free stream region, but recycling the slow flow again. You then leave the free stream region either largely untouched or use it elsewhere. Porsche did a good job making the side mirrors pointy at the front. That reduces the drag of them. And actually you can see how the wake is directed up quite a lot. So the mirror is producing a little bit of downforce. This is different to some supercars and hypercars that try to capture the flow from the side mirror into the radiator. Now we come to the rear wing, which is an interesting one because it can be placed at different heights depending on how much downforce you want. If you want more, you can jack it up really high and get into clean flow. That way the wing can operate as efficiently as it can. In this configuration though, it is stowed and that is to reduce the drag as we can see here. That means you don't get as much downforce as well and that's the trade-off. But the thing that I'm always interested in is when it comes to supercars, the engines need so much cooling and often behind the rear window, there is just this jump from the roof down to it. And we get that too here, this just cut out. But the Porsche is a little more complicated too because we also get this jump partly so the driver can see out the rear window. 
All these requirements really need to be satisfied for both safety and the car's overall performance because if the engine can perform better, it does mean though that in the stowed position and really even in low mounted positions too, you see how much slow moving flow is hitting the wing. The cutout at the back creates a large weight that flows right into it. And in a way, the wing is still doing a decent job with producing downforce because you can see how it kicks the flow up a little still. That comes with an increased wake throw and drag. But Porsche likely went this route because even in the stowed position, the car needs some downforce for handling, so they didn't want to hide it completely. Now the diffuser. It has several guide vanes and is a little more aggressive than a regular car, but not as aggressive as some hypercars. That is done so the car can get some downforce still, but it doesn't produce excess drag by kicking the flow sky high. The wake still stays compact. So this car was really designed to be more low drag than high downforce, at least in this configuration. Now, the rear edge extensions, how do they work? Well, their main role is to create a crisp edge for the flow to detach from, and it really works. Look how the flow goes along and then immediately separates there. The major benefits of that are, you get a more symmetrical wake, so the forces on the car are steadier, as such, driving is easier and more predictable. And the wake stands a chance of being weaker too. Has it though? Well, this simulation shows the car without the rear edge extensions, and the wake definitely looks stronger here. We need to see later how the drag and lift coefficients were affected by this flow control device. And that's the overall effect. But remember that there are some tiny gaps between the extension and the rest of the car. And the reason for even having them there is to help keep the flow from the outside really whipping back in and becoming unsteady again. These little gaps help reduce the pressure difference inside the region to outside the region. And the regular car's drag coefficient is 0.39. And removing the rear edge extensions increased that to 0.40. Both values are pretty okay though. With the rear extension, the lift is almost nothing, but removing it jacks it up to 9.6 kilos. So the rear extension is really helping the diffuser and the rear of the car produce downforce. Peace out amigos.